Hi, good morning. We're here with Gemma Cox from Frey Recruitment. How are you doing, Gemma? I'm doing well, thanks, Mike. How are you? Yeah, really well, thank you. Enjoying this lovely weather that we have in September at the moment. So uh, I'm looking forward to the interview, of course. So uh, to start things off, if you could just give us a bit of background as to who you are, what it is that you do and how long you've been doing it for, please. So, yeah, my name is Gemma Cox and myself and my business partner um, set up a recruitment company that specializes in placing super yacht crew um, and household staff to private residences um, worldwide. Um, and we both started this company. It's pretty new still. So we're going into, we're in our second year, about 19 months ago. Awesome. So it sounds very uh, glamorous. <laughs> should I say possibly how did you get into that what was your sort of background really to leading up to this it's funny because I think um the, there's nothing gra glamorous about the word recruitment I think people just hear the word super yacht and they yeah, immediately think glamour. <laughs> but there's nothing sexy about the word recruitment is there <laughs> um so both of us Charlotte and myself um that was our background so the two of us equally spent 15 years 10 to 15 years each in that industry um predominantly working as yacht chefs in the big sailing uh, sailing yacht world. So the, the industry is either sailing yachts or motor yachts. And the two of us predominantly worked on sailing yachts. And that is, you know, where our biggest network lies. Brilliant. So um, what makes you different then from, are, are there many people that do this, many other companies? What's kind of your standout uh, point of difference? Quite honestly, it is a really heavily saturated market. There's a lot of competition. There are many companies that do the same thing, um, but there are many, many boats. You know, there's over 10,000 um, yachts over the size of, you know, 50 meters, and they will hire on average of, you know, 15 crew each. Um, I think our biggest point of difference is that we are small. You know, it is just the two of us and we work solely um, with the network that we have, well, we started working with the network that we had built over the years, just doing what we did um, and having this sort of intimate knowledge of what people are looking for, what is expected and what is needed and what kind of a, a candidate would suit certain roles. Um, I'm not saying that the other companies don't offer the same service. I think there is just room for all of us. And to be, to be honest with you, I wasn't confident that there would be in the beginning, but it has proven to still be a success. Oh, brilliant. So what uh, does the future look like at the moment for you? And what do you see as the, the challenges are in overcoming? Um, at the moment, I think, you know, Charlotte and I talk about this a lot. Um, I think there's people are always talking about how are you going to grow and how are you going to expand? And at the moment, we're both really happy just maintaining um, and having integrity and consistency with what we do and the service that we provide. Um, I think our biggest challenge is that, well, I think our point of difference and the selling point of the company is that it is us and people know that whenever they contact Frey Recruitment, they are speaking with myself or with her and we have that relationship and that network and that client base is growing from word of mouth more so than anything else. You know, we haven't spent a penny on marketing. Our online presence I feel is quite weak and that's something that I would like to work on it's something that I was very aware of in the beginning but to date it has proven to have not mattered as much as I had thought so I think the challenges in the future is having potentially for my own satisfaction and potentially to compete more so with others online is to have a slicker presence online um, and therefore maybe grow our client base um, well, to be honest with you, Mike, it's not the client base that we struggle with. It's getting the quality of candidates. You know, the, yeah. the, the, the positions are there. It's, it seems to be that there's a shortage of quality candidates for certain positions. And as the industry grows, the boats are getting bigger. The skill sets are more niche. Um, so how we combat that and whether that's more training and other people and external companies that service that, I'm not sure. But I'm going, oh, sorry, I've completely lost track of what I was saying. I think for us, the challenge is growing a tangible asset. So I think at the moment, yeah. the, the value is, is it's us. But as soon as one of us steps away or we both step away, there is no company. So how do we grow a business that yeah. has its own value outside of us as well without losing the integrity of the service that we provide? 
feel that in terms of the position that you you are in with you know relatively new business 19 months or so you say yeah uh, and you uh, it's yourself and your, your business partner in there and you're wanting to grow but that that challenge of how do you make yeah, the, the business of value if you left the business I'm sure it's well we we know here at Action Coach that's a very common um challenge to to kind of figure out and, and work out so you're definitely not alone there in in having those kind of sort of thoughts but they're also good thoughts because you're going to ask questions you're asking the right questions now about how how do we do that um, and, it's the, and it's the personal relationships that I think our clients and candidates enjoy so previously yeah. when I was working um on yachts myself I was always hesitant to use an agency you never knew who was going to answer the phone you never knew who you were going to be dealing with what their background was whether they had any any real understanding of the brief that you were providing and so often you would be flooded with cvs that were irrelevant um so they were just sort of these very faceless big companies and they still exist and you know they've they've expanded and they've grown and they might have 10 15 20 plus agents but you don't know which one is which from the other so how do we grow without losing that personal service and i think that's our biggest challenge but equally at the moment it's a really maintainable pace and speed that we are growing um in let's say revenue and reputation um and our candidate and client base is growing but there will come a point where you still want to have something that is a tangible asset that either you can step back from and still be yeah. a part of or that you may be in the in the future want to sell to somebody else yeah it's good that you're thinking along those lines and having to think about yeah, what what that future potentially looks like. So with all that considered and where you are now, which yeah, it was a relatively short business journey to, to date, but what would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned so far, if there's one you can pick out? Is that you will just continue to learn along the way. Um, I don't know if it's our egos or if it's this expectation that you should know everything from the start and that you should have everything in place from the start, but I think the best thing to do is to start and then you learn by starting um and the start of our business didn't look anything like i was expecting a new business to look like you know we didn't even have a website for seven months um so you know i i expected that we would gain some kind of following online and then do a soft launch and then we would have an audience to launch to and in the end we just told a few people that we knew in the industry this is what we were starting we'd registered the the company so that we could trade and and then we got really busy and then we didn't have time to set up the website and we had to make time seven months later. So yeah. <laughs> it was just all on the telephone and our, and our emails. Um, so I think, I think really is that you start and you keep learning and you adjust. Yeah. It sounds like, you know, you, you've hit on something and as you say, you're tapping into a reputation and a network that you've, that you've got there, which is fantastic. So yeah, it sounds exciting about building a business around those those kind of foundations that you've that you've got and how do you keep on with that essence of what you've got for the future uh and hopefully, the yeah and hopefully that only you know so long as you keep um to the quality service that you provide that reputation only continues to, to sort of grow um and become more consistent, you know, and people trust you more because, you know, we're, now that we're into our 19 months, the thing with the superior industry is there are, you know, there's, I think there's a higher turnaround of crew, let's say, or staff than other industries because of the nature of the job. So yeah. we're getting to that stage now where we might have had someone who we placed at the very beginning um, and they're moving on to new jobs. Um, but the, the clients have been happy with the amount of time they've spent with them and the candidates have been happy with what they've learned and they're now sort of, progressing in their careers and we we've had a really low I don't want to say fail rate but it, we, we we've had very we can count on one hand how many people haven't worked out in 19 months and you know we, as long as we stick to quality over quantity I think that will only serve us in the future. So that potentially leads on to the, the next question I have about inspiration what inspires you to do what you do what is it what's the essence of you that you enjoy in and what you're doing and why you're doing it, I guess. Well, I've always loved people and I've always liked to, ins- well, I don't like to inspire people, but so many people have dreams and they've got passions and they have things that they want to do. And we're all like, we're all a bit scared, aren't we? We don't like to step out of our comfort zone. <laughs> yeah. If I could see good in someone and I can think, 
wow, that person would really do well in this environment, on this job. Um, I think it would help them with what they're trying to achieve in their life. And if I can make those connections and see those people flourish, then that gives me a lot of satisfaction. Um, I mean, there is one example of a guy that I met um, racing. So I'll still participate in regattas when I can because I really enjoy it. And it's also a really great way to see a lot of people in the industry at the same time whilst doing something that I still love and yeah. enjoy. Um, and you keep it keeps you relevant. And I remember thinking about one one particular candidate, one particular guy, and I just thought, wow, this kid is great. Yeah. There will come a point where a job comes on our table, and I think he will be perfect for. I had a few things in mind, and it's one particular position came up that was the exact position that I had in my mind for this person. And um, you know, four weeks later, he's flying out to Papua New Guinea, and he's. Uh, you know furthered his training he has done really incredible ocean miles and he is just really loving loving what he's doing so he's not only on a brilliant adventure but he's progressing in his you know maritime career and he's loving it at the same time so um it was the it was a brilliant next step for him and that that gives me a lot of satisfaction yeah definitely you're helping to uh change people's lives aren't you really there by uh, making the connecting the dots and and seeing what you can see to to help people yeah, it's gainful employment for a lot of these people and yeah. it can create a really great life for them for themselves. Excellent. So um, if you were to give advice to someone just starting out in business, is there anything? Start. Any just of wisdom? start it. Yeah. I would just say just, just start. start and um, I mean, especially if you're making a change in what you do. Again, to use another example, I have a friend who does one thing and she's thinking about doing something else and she's saying to me you know but I keep, keep getting approached about the about more work surrounded you know in in the region of what I've been doing and I said of course you are because that's how people who what people know you as until you say yeah. that you are something else until you say that you're doing what you're doing you know it's unlikely that someone is going to come to you and ask you to to do that for them you know if you want to you know suddenly become um a plumber but you've been a chef no one's going to come to you and ask you to do their plumbing if you're still cooking <laughs> so, um, so I think telling people that you're making a change starting whether that be a slow start whilst you do it on the side of something else or whether that be you know stopping what you're doing and just going all in I think just just start and put it out there and then you learn along the way good share thank you thank you for that so lastly in terms of any uh well latest news around your business or sharing where we can get into contact with you your website uh, feel free uh, to, to do that now before we we say goodbye i don't really know about latest news we're just yeah. doing what we do and we're carrying on with what we do and um the website is freyrecruitment.com i think it's pretty niche i'm not sure how many yacht crew are out there in yorkshire yeah. <laughs> But um, they they do exist. Uh, we actually have Maybe some clients so. candidates who uh, who are looking people who are looking to change their lives and come on board as a uh, a, a yacht crew person. So you know, yeah, get in touch. To but you. no, we're we're just we're just ticking along and carrying on. It's a busy time now for us as the seasons come, um, the summer season comes to an end and the boats are pulling in for maintenance and quite often that means a changeover of of crew moving forward into the into the winter months so yeah we're just carrying on with what we do excellent Gemma it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you thank you very much for being so open and, and sharing your experiences I wish you all the best for the future thanks Mike thank you